soybeans. New crop soybeans. Holy cow. Has anybody here ever heard me speak before? No. One, did you hear me last winter? Good, okay. So you didn't sell any beans on my advice. Good. Last winter, I'm ashamed to admit it, very ashamed. I was a bean bear. I was looking out at massive Brazilian production, looking out at three years of massive U.S. production, looking at another potentially record year of U.S. production. Ending stocks are going to be 450, 500 million bushels. Ladies and gentlemen, that's 750 wheat. Get it sold in here at $859. You'll be grateful you did. I gave that speech from about December through March. I gave that speech really until about here. And I apologize. That was terrible advice. What happened? The same thing that I think is happening today in corn happened in soybeans. We were testing these values. We were testing those lows. And what happened? We found value. We found trouble around the world. We found demand was still very strong. We saw exports were still happening. We saw China, when we got up to here, start to step back into this market. But more importantly, we saw a shift in fund perspective of soybeans. They were in that 450 million bushel carryout. They were short, 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 short soybeans. And we couldn't push this market down any further. We just couldn't break it below 850. It didn't happen. So what happened? We started to unload those short positions. Those funds started buying. They started covering their shorts. That started giving us a little bit of a price rally. Then we transitioned from short into trend following. Now we've got a definable trend here in soybeans. And the funds started to buy. They started to buy. They started accumulating soybean positions. Accumulate and accumulate and accumulate until we got up into here and we had a longer, long spec soy position in 2016 than we did in 2012, 2013. Record long position in beans. Right up in here. $3. $3 rally happened because it happened. Because it was time. Because we saw that shift in monetary, or that shift in spec fund investment patterns. They steamrolled this market higher. Along the way, we found reasons to keep it running. We fed that bull. China started to step in. We started to see, you know, U.S. acres weren't going to be 87 million soy acres. You know, it was 83 and change. Okay, another little bullish factor. We, the crush was phenomenal all year. Okay, another little bullish factor. Then we got toppy, record long fund position. It looks like a good U.S. crop. Those things conspired. We broke this market back down. Now, green line is 200-day. Red line is 20-day moving average. 200-day, we held. We've stopped really seeing that uh, the bloodletting come in the soybean market. Now we're waiting. We're waiting for August to come around. We're waiting to see how this crop is going to finish. The good news is, Beans look good from the road, but nobody has any idea, as Dan mentioned, how they're going to yield. We're going to have to wait until the combines start to roll. But we've seen this market catch. I think we're going to fluctuate in here. Any hot spell, I want to be a buyer. Um, if we start to get adequate moisture, we could see it break down a little further. As we look out longer term, through the rest of 2016, 2017, we have put in a very, very strong bottom in here, right around 860 in soybeans. That is going to be a very, very tough nut to crack. We are going to need to see massive Brazilian production. We are going to need to see U.S. at 50 bushel per acre to break down that wall that's going to catch us here around 860, 880. Uh, 870, I guess, is where we really put in that low. So I'm, again, not a seller in here of soybeans. I'm not yet a buyer either. Again, there's too much risk as we look out through the month of August. Uh, we could see this thing break down a little further. We could see it drop, test $9. I think that is in the cards with a big U.S. yield. But again, in corn and in soybeans, I think storage is really going to pay for itself as we get in through the rest of 16 and into 17 because, once again, we have a confluence of factors coming together that is going to be bullish for beans in the, the medium term.
one to three years.